I visited the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, where residents are reporting that they are still suffering from the harmful effects of oil and dispersants four years after the Deepwater Horizon spill. This is my debrief. We spent a lot of time um, on the Gulf um, with shrimpers, uh, fishermen, oystermen, and I guess what struck me was that even though the FDA says the seafood is fine, the people or some of the people who, who catch it wouldn't touch it. They won't eat the shrimp, the oysters, or the fish. And that to me is quite telling because these people make their living on the Gulf and if they're not eating their own oysters, then what does that tell you? Why doesn't everybody leave? I mean, I asked that question to a lot of people I met down there, especially the people who had sick families. The answers were tragic. Can't sell my home, I have no money, all I know is the Gulf, all I know is shrimping or being an oysterman or what, what have you. They just financially can't do it, so they're sort of stuck in this toxic morass and they have no way to get out. And, um, you know, that was one of the real tragedies of, of doing this story. The most surprising thing, I think, about this story for me is that in Louisiana, everyone knows somebody that's sick or has someone in their family who's sick, or they all know the story. They know everything about what was sprayed. They know the Corexit. They know Corexit in oil is 52 times more toxic. Everyone knows the story. Yet when you leave that area in New York or in Los Angeles, people don't know. And I find that to be, I don't know why that's true. You know, when I talk to the senator, he said, look, I went to the president, I went to the Senate, I went to the Congress and said, we should not be using Corexit, and nothing was done. And he hinted that, you know, there was the oil lobby pays off a lot of money. I don't know what's happened um, to this story in other platforms or newspapers or TV shows, but this is one of the biggest stories in, in America, and nobody's telling it, and I don't know why. I guess the interview I would have really liked to have gotten for this piece would have been with Lisa Jackson, the former head of the EPA, who said that the toughest decision that she had to make was actually using Corexit as a dispersant right at the wellhead. I would have liked to talk to her about that. Or the current head of the EPA to ask her, okay, we now know that Corexit is toxic, the government knows it, there's been recommendations, why hasn't the EPA done something to make this illegal? I guess the biggest takeaway from this for me was that after the oil spill, the government did have a bipartisan commission to look into this exact problem, and they made a number of recommendations on what to do, and not one of them were adopted because the government doesn't work. So the next time there's a huge oil spill, which there will be, Corexit will be used again. 